What's up Skate Athletics fam? Welcome back to another video. This week I'm going to show you how low volume power training can actually help enhance your next skate session. It's been suggested in many strength conditioning texts and sports science research articles that low volume high intensity resistance training may enhance athletic performance in trained individuals. And to add to this, these dudes decided to take a look at the effect of low volume power training on explosive strength characteristics. And what they found was that low volume power type training sessions resulted in a delayed enhancement of explosive muscle performance, which is greatest at 24 hours after the activity. And if you look further into the study, you'll see that the enhanced effect can last up to 48 hours. So what does this suggest? Yep, low volume power type training can enhance your skate sessions. So I know we've all experienced this before. Sometimes we have sessions where we just feel on and sometimes we just feel completely off. And of course, there are so many combining variables that are gonna affect how you skate that day. But this is one that we can control. So before we dive into what exercises you're gonna use, I do need just to cover one thing. The participants used in this study were national level power and team sport athletes. Additionally, they were roughly about 23 years old, weighed about 170 pounds with about 9% body fat, and could back squat about 160 kgs, which is close to 360 pounds. Also, they had a training history of about 10 years, and they worked out about six to eight times per week. So yeah, these dudes are straight up athletes. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is so we don't just completely overdo it, get super sore, and ruin our next skate session. Also, we need to take into account the sport that we play. Skateboarding is dangerous as and I really do not recommend stepping on your board when your legs are sore. Other sports, it's usually okay if you're a little sore. I've played basketball super sore, I've done jiu-jitsu super sore, and I'm always fine. But skating, it's a different story. When your muscles are tight and you're feeling sluggish, any little movement on that board, if you're gonna fall, could be very dangerous. So in short, please be aware of your training experience level and how sore you normally get from workouts. Cool, we're moving on. So now we're gonna take a look at what the participants did in the study before getting remeasured for explosive strength. So each participant performed five sets, four reps of the jump squat at 40% of their one rep max in relation to their half squat. Additionally, the subjects were instructed to perform the deep squat with a knee angle of roughly 90 to 100 degrees. So basically they weren't squatting ass to grass, they were just getting low enough to get their knees to about a 90 degree angle. All right, easy enough. So instead of just showing you one exercise for this entire video, what I'm gonna do is offer three alternatives. You can basically pick any of these, right? The whole concept is using low volume power type training to once again, give that enhanced effect during your next session. So since the squat jump's already taken, I'm gonna choose the hex bar jump, the dumbbell seated jump, and a drop jump. All four of these exercises are quick, powerful movements that are definitely gonna get your body primed for that next session. How many sets, reps, and at what intensity? All right, so this is where you really need to be aware of that training level experience. If you're somebody who works out, let's say zero to two times per week, let's use two sets and three reps at roughly 10 to 30% of your one rep max, or 10 to 30% of a rating of perceived exertion. If you're somebody who considers yourself, let's say intermediate, and you work out maybe two to three times per week, let's use about three sets and four reps, getting closer to 20 to 40% of your one rep max, and or rating of perceived exertion. And if you're somebody who works out more than four days a week, let's use what the protocol used. So five sets, four reps, at about 40% of your one rep max and or rating of perceived exertion. Real quick, I know we've gone over one rep max and rating of perceived exertion so many times, but I haven't made a full video about it. So I'm gonna ask you a quick question. Do you guys completely understand what that's saying or are you still a little bit confused? Please leave a comment below if you wanna see a full video about the one rep max and rating of perceived exertion. Okay, real quick, before we move on, I'm actually gonna help you find your one rep max for this exercise. And if you're somebody who already knows your half squat one rep max, or you're just gonna use a rating of perceived exertion, go ahead and skip to this timestamp below. So to find your one rep max, there's a couple things you can do. You can use a predicted one rep max, or you can actually test it. So the quicker way, obviously, is just to get that predicted one rep max. If you're somebody who works out often, you should know roughly like what weights get pretty hard for you and basically where you're gonna fail on those lifts. And all you gotta do is type that into an online calculator and bam, there you go. It'll give you a number that is relatively close. Option number two is the longer way. Just like the study, let's actually measure our one rep max in the half squat. So from the protocol, we can recall that 
the one rep max was taken from a half squat with the knee angle roughly at 90 to 100 degrees. So if you're doing this alone, I would highly recommend setting up a safety catch basically at that point that's just below your 90 degree knee angle. Once you have your rack set up, now you're gonna follow the standardized protocol. This protocol is gonna take a bunch of time to go over, so for time purposes, I'm just gonna quickly skip through and give you a link, and in the future, we'll make a full video about it. This is the gold standard one rep max protocol, so please follow it if you're gonna test your one rep max. I would highly recommend not doing this alone. Please have a spotter behind you, but if you're gonna do it alone, I do need to show you one more thing. So you need to learn how to bail a back squat. The whole point of one rep max testing is basically to find your point of failure, so you're most likely gonna fail on a squat. And that's obviously totally fine, but you just need to know how to ditch that barbell so it doesn't get super sketchy. So here we go, you got two options. Number one, use the safety catch. Squat down to your lowest point, and as soon as you feel that you're not gonna be able to complete the rep, start to lean back, puffing up your chest, so you're able to go forward away from the bar. And you'll notice in the clip, the bar just drops onto the safety catch and I just shoot forward. You can either drop to one knee or stay on your feet. Honestly, this way is pretty easy, but I would also recommend just practicing it a little bit. Main thing, just don't lean forward because then obviously there's nowhere to go. And here's option number two. If you don't have a safety catch and you're not even squatting in a rack, you're gonna have to ditch the bar behind you. Obviously, make sure your spotter's not behind you or just some random person. As you're squatting down, same idea, just make sure you're bringing that chest up, almost like you're leaning back a little bit. The bar will start to slowly roll off your back and you just gotta make sure you dip out as quick as possible. In this version, I would highly recommend drop to one knee and then you can stand up right after. Honestly, this is not that hard and it's to keep you safe. So please do a couple practice reps with just the bar, try even a lighter load, and then finally work your way up to your heavier load. So if you're gonna test your own one rep max, it needs to be done at least two to three days prior to this workout. Definitely do not test your one rep max and then try the workout right after. I guarantee you'll get super sore. Now we have all that covered, let's show you what the workout's gonna look like. So first thing you're gonna do is start with this 10 exercise warm up. Once you're done with your warm up, now we can get right into our jump squats and or the alternative you choose. You can just choose one of the ones I listed and just make sure you're aware of that set reps and intensity range. During the jump squat, dip down to a comfortable squat depth. Control the bottom position and explode into that vertical jump. Be aware of your landings, absorb the force, reset your feet and begin the next rep. Make sure your form stays perfect as this is a challenging and somewhat dangerous exercise. I would highly recommend doing these in the squat rack and under the supervision of a qualified professional. And finally, when you're done with your training session, make sure you do a couple mobility exercises to really restore and open up those hips. Here are three that should bring you some relaxation after that intense session. Start with the pigeon stretch. Bring your leg up perpendicular to your body, trying to keep your hips straight. Drop your hips down as you keep your chest up. Place the majority of your weight on that front leg and you'll feel the stretch in that outer side of your glute and your hip. From here, you have a couple options. If you wanna make the stretch a little bit deeper, you can drop to your elbows or you can reach your hands out laying over your knee. For the second stretch, try the frog. Open your legs up, keeping your ankles at 90 degrees and keep them directly behind your knees. Once you're in this position, sit your hips back and you'll feel the stretch in the inside of your legs, close to your adductors and your hips. If this isn't too much, walk your hands out and really push your hips back. The next mobility exercise is for your hip, hamstring, and your ankle. Start by pressing the ground away and try to straighten out your leg and you'll feel that deep hamstring stretch. 
Hold this position for about a couple seconds and then transition to a deep lunge. Press your knee out wide and as far past your toes as possible. Now you'll feel that stretch in the inside of your hip and maybe even in your calf. Hold each position for about a couple seconds and let's do 10 reps on each side. So you may notice, this workout is going to feel very different than most. As we've previously talked about, this workout is here to prime your body for the next time you go skating. Not to help you lose weight, not to kill your legs, nor to create tons of muscle damage and cause a hypertrophic response. After the workout, you may feel like you didn't do enough, but trust the science. If you overdo it, even just by a little bit, you may cause just too much muscle damage, getting you too sore. And of course, that's gonna have a negative effect on your skate session, which is literally the opposite reason why you're here. So please give this a try. Just keep an open mind and go enjoy the benefits during your next session. I bet after you warm up and step on your board, you'll be popping like crazy and feeling explosive. If you guys like this week's video, please hit the like button to show your support and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys later on Skate Athletics.